Hello to everybody. Uh, just wait a second. Yeah, I'm very glad uh, I have been invited to be part of this exciting project and I look forward to see what will come out of it. And as Sven just uh, said, I was asked to hold a flash lecture about exploring the different options when it comes to collaboration between filmmakers and composers from the point of view of a composer. In other words, to show different ways to make live music and film, live music and film, that go beyond the standard model. And by standard model, it is meant that the film seems to play a more predominant role, while the music plays a supporting one. Both begin and end at the same time, while the presence of the mus musicians in the show is essentially seen as an accompaniment only that. In this standard model, there is also a usual order of events in the work process. In most cases, there is an already edited film to which the composer has to refer. Then the music is gradually composed and is performed at the end by the ensemble or orchestra together with the film. This is the case, for instance, with old silent films, as Sven pointed out, for live ensembles or orchestras, which I did a lot myself. This order of events is frankly comfortable, because it is uncomplicated and requires very little discussion. In case of mute films or silent films, the filmmakers are obviously already long dead, and as a composer I can work in whatever artistic direction I want with a film. It is much more complicated. Both music and film are elaborated at the same time through close cooperation between filmmakers and composers, particularly when composers and filmmakers don't know each other at all, as in our case. I experienced something of the kind with the project Berlin Symphonie einer Großstadt, a black and white film from Thomas Schad with live mu music for big orchestra and sampler, which was, uh, which was performed in 2002 in Berlin by the SVR Symphony Orchestra under the direction of Roland Kluttig in the Staatsoper Unter den Linden. As shown by the title, this film was a reference to Walter Ruckmann's legendary documentary film Berlin, die Symphonie einer Großstadt from 1927. The music took form at the same time as the film from Thomas Schad, in that the filmmaker and the composers have worked in parallel. We obviously had agreed first on the basic structure, on the duration, the dramaturgy, and ideas for different sections. But then, each one of us started working independently. The moment we had a finished part, we would send it to the filmmaker and his team and vice versa. This led to the fact that sometimes a music section became the model for a scene and sometimes the inverse. Visual material became a model for the musical part. We still have met from time to time to discuss and evaluate the results together, to decide on new strategies, to reject some parts, etc a work process which is a lot more complex and more time consuming than in the standard model mentioned earlier. Although, like in the presentation, concert with film, the result is pretty much the same. Such cooperation necessitates a lot of trust, tolerance and generosity to get to a, res a result with which all parties are satisfied. Allow me to say a few more things about my experience with projects that avoided this above-mentioned standard model at all. One of those is my 3D opera Anna's Wake for soundtrack, live singer and 60mm film from 1992, so a very old one, which was performed in Berlin. Text ideas and dramaturgy were developed together by both the filmmaker Christine Daum and me. 
We researched a lot beforehand, if I remember correctly, the preliminary work took almost two years before we even started the actual production. That means to shoot the film and to compose the music. To put it briefly, it was about the history of opera and psychoanalysis and her first patient, the so-called Anna O. The piece consists of three different elements, which constantly intertwine. First, a soundtrack consisting of battle of voices, choral singings, instruments, and everyday sounds. Second, a 60 mm film projected on two different screens. And third, the singer and main figure, Anna Clementi, as a protagonist in the film, as well as live on stage. These three elements operate equally. The interplay of the film figure and the live singer is very precisely worked out. Anna Clementi speaks live with her own representation on screen, and if she wears a white dress on stage, her character sits facing her with a green tube pea suite. If she sings live, her cellulite mouth also moves, shouts, etc. During the performance, all these elements were coordinated with the help of the tape. Special audio cues served as a guideline for the singer as well as for the protectionist, projectionist <coughs> to prepare the entries. So there was no conductor at all and only the audio cues uh, made this collaboration or this coming together of all these elements possible. Why we named this work 3D Opera was, was obviously not decided by chance. The terminology fails to define such interconnections between the hearing and seeing, so we got out of the affair with the term 3D opera. Another example I would like to point out is Silence Moves, a project from 1997, which I have developed together with visual artists Susan Grunenberg and Sharon Sawyer, and that was performed in 1997 in Dresden. Silence Moves is a kind of chamber opera for five musicians in movement, live electronics, lighting system, and video projections, and plays with the multi-layered connections of seeing and hearing and symbols and sounds. In short, it's about, it's about the very particular relationship between writing and sound, about a staging of the history of writing, which is also a history of the language. The approach was the following. The starting point of the work was a complex time structure designed by me on millimeter paper in which every parameter was drawn. Entry of entry of every musician, their movement, also the light entry, so there's a, a layer only of light, so it reminds me to uh, the Archaeas, as well as the entries of the three projections. That means everything, also the cinematic events, more precisely their entries, durations, and the intertwining of the different projections were already set in the timeline on paper, even before both visual and musical material was elaborated. And in one place, even the rhythm of the film had been determined before the content of the film was made. And after some initial misunderstandings between filmmaker, the filmmakers and myself, this actually worked very well, I think also because one of the filmmakers was a professional musician. Like the project itself requested, we selected rather unusual projection surfaces. Two old industrial windows, which we hang up and glue in the performance space with a special foil to make it a good projection surface. There was also a gauze that was attached in front of the stage and that covered the whole stage's height and width like a transparent tight curtain. With appropriate lighting, it allowed a very clear view of the stage with the musicians at the two windows, but also could be used as a projection screen. In this case, the stage events were to be recognized only shadowy. This strange, uh, this stage, maybe also strange, this stage construction was very interesting, although very complex. Therefore, we got light designer Christina Wolf to work with us, and also Christian Kasten for the final rehearsals, who would direct the musician's choreography as prescribed earlier in the score. 
We were quite a big team and the communication was not always so simple, but the result was in the end, in, in the end very convincing. Well, in the two examples now, I just was talking about, we, were, we are dealing, of course, with totally obsolete technology, technology. But perhaps the main questions remain somehow the same. Why putting music and film together? And how? And how does this influence or change our perception? Nevertheless, we nowadays have quite different technical possibilities to work with film and sound in our so-called digital age. Music files and film files, they both are in the end just only data, a digital code. This code is indifferent to audio, video or image data and detached from any specific material. This allows entirely new possibilities. As a short example, the sampling techniques which we composers know about from having worked with audio files are also possible to use with video clips nowadays. With use of a controller keyboard and a specific software, a musician can play audio samples as well as video samples from score. A great example is uh, Stefan Prince's Piano Hero, which you can find on Vimeo. Stefan Prince is a composer who works a lot with different media. But to let me gradually conclude, my task was a flash lecture, so... <laughs> as a composer, I can say that it is quite complex to develop the project together with filmmakers. That means to develop film and music at the same time. Mainly because composers and filmmakers speak different languages and have different knowledge and methods. Filmmakers often understand very little about music and vice versa. But also because music as well as film are time-related arts, therefore both artists tend to describe themselves as experts in this field. That means one of the fundamental prerequisites for such a project is to learn how to understand ourselves mutually. In this context, I would like to recommend the music theatre work Ökonomien des Handels from the artists' duet Daniel Kötter and Hans Seidel, a filmmaker and a composer. Those two are an exceptional team and they have already realized many big projects. All their projects are about the question to which extent can the hearing and the seeing relate to each other? Which understanding can be derived from this coupling? And with which relevance can such works apply itself in non-artistic areas of society? Daniel Kurta and Hans Seidel have developed a great vocabulary and expertise in multidisciplinary arts through their long-lasting cooperation. That means they have developed an own language together. And this appears to me to be fundamental to be the fundamental prerequisite for a project's success like ours. Thank you.